okay. I, th I think we're going. So, uh, Junyo is currently a master's student in physics at the National Gen Kong University, supervised by Professor Yong Jern Liang. His research interests is in quantum cryptography, including security analysis of quantum key distribution protocols and quantum random number generation protocols, especially with numerical assisted proofs. Let us all welcome our speaker. Okay, thank you for a nice introduction. So it's my pleasure to be invited to give the to give a talk in this seminar. So today I'm going to share my work with my colleague Kai Xiang Chen, Professor Kai Min Zhong, Min Shou Xie, and Professor Yong Chen Liang, and also Jero Noel Tabia. So before go down to the business, I want to first particularly thank the two, uh, two author. So first one is my advisor, Professor Yong Chen Liang. So he provides a lot of opportunity for me to attend many different conferences so that I can have like many discussion in, with different people and exchange ideas and get feedback from it. And also now to mention the discussion with, with him also helped me to I complement every every detail in the manuscript. And also I, I want to thank uh, Jero Noel Tavia, which was a poster in our group many several months before. So this work is was initially brought out by Jero and also my colleague Kai Xiang Chen. And I also want to thank for his patience. So every time when I like come out some new results, I will he will have time to we we will have discussion with this that so that I can like have enough confidence to continue my work. Okay, let's get back to the topic. So in today's talk, I will first give some preliminary which is like essentially to understand my work. So first is the definition of a non-local game. And then I will talk about how to like generate standard and brand readiness from a non-local game. Next, I will tell you the main idea of our work, which is the so-called zero probability constraint and how to add in zero probability constraint to the non-local game. And then I will give you some high level idea. And also the method, how do I like, compute all this stuff numerically? Then I will show some of the figure as my for my results. Finally, I will end up with two take home message. Okay, let's start from the introduction to a non-local game. So for a non-local game, there will be a referee and two or more than two players. So in since we are in the, I want to, we are considered a two-party case, so there are only two players. And also because of the term non-local, the players are not allowed to communicate with each other during the game. So in the game, the referee will sample a question from a question set. So the question here are x, y in the picture. So he will send the question to each player and like ask them to handle hand over their answer, like a, b here. And the player need to hand, like generate the answer corresponding to the question and also a winning problem, a winning condition. So a non-local game is defined by the question set x, y. And, and answer sets A, B, and also the winning condition function, like uh, a map a, X, Y, A, B into a binary. So taking the Carlson Hong Simony Holtz game, or in short CHSH game, for example, all the equation and answer are binary. And also the winning condition is following x product y equal to a x or b. So here x or is 
plus under modular two. And for a CHSH game, we can use like this winning probability, like the probability of this winning condition to certify the behavior of a player. For example, if the player can only use the a classical strategy, then the maximum winning probability they can achieve is 75%. However, if a player has the ability to implement the quantum strategy, then they can achieve higher, like approximately 85%. So we can like use this value to to say something about the behavior of the player. Then let's come to the generation and randomness generation from the long local game. So in this case, we will consider two devices, two untrusted devices instead of a player. So here, how we want to like certify our device. We want to like make sure the behavior of the device is really performing what we want them to do. So here, the question uh, like serve as the input, like the choice of a, uh, of a measurement performed by the device. And the answer then, would be the output or the measurement outcome generated from the device. And because they, in order to do some quantum stuff, they need to share some entangled pair, like row A, B here, and like the two party will do the measurement on their corresponding parts. And to like, to measure the winning probability, they need, the two parties need to perform the measurement many, many times, like play the game many, many times. And to check whether the winning probability, like for CHSH game case, is x star y equal to x or b is high enough. If it is high enough, then they can compute the entropy, which can be thought as the, the quantity of the randomness they can extract from the outcome. Like the quantity is the conditional monument entropy, AB condition on X, Y, E prime. So here AB are the outcome or the output from the non-local game and X, Y are the input or the equation. And here E prime is uh, the adversary's quantum system. So be, beside the uh, like randomness extract from the two parties outcome, we can also consider the randomness extract from only a single party's outcome. So which is like H A condition on X Y E prime. So it's sometimes called local randomness. In the formal case is called global randomness. And actually, we we are not just like computing this quantity. We need to consider the like optimization or the minimization of this quantity to like take all possible adversaries take into consideration. So. In this case, what we can do is we can consider a purification of raw AB, like aside ABE prong here, and also all possible measurement taken by the two party MN. Um, the the AD same bar. So I didn't I use MN um, to denote the measurement here. So because we want to like take all possible attack into consideration, so like the simplest way is we just consider the worst case. So we just take the minimal or the infimal of this quantity. And also, since uh, we have the uh, we have the data from the experiment, like the winning probability observed in the experiment. So we need to like 
enforce this constraint. Like the probability generated by the state and the measurement need to be equal to the experimental observation. I'm oh, sorry, quick question. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm just wondering, you, you are talking about the worst case, so you are calculating the minimum values, but you want to design a system that can have this minimum value as high as possible. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay. So. Okay. So after they like get this value from some numerical computation, then they can further process the the B string from their outcome like A from A1 to AN and also B1 to e, BN with a quantum proof strong extractor. So the idea of this quantum proof extractor is it can it will shorten the B string and like shorten shorten a B string to the length like approximately same as the entropy, the amount of the entropy. But uh, in fact, it will like cost a little bit, a little bit more in order to provide some security. So security here means like the output B string from the extractor is uncorrelated with if's quantum system, the adversary's quantum system, and also the output B string, the distribution of the output B string is close to. The, the uniform distribution with some small error probability. So this is the, the case of randomness generation from non-local game. And so be, beyond the like standard type of randomness, there is an, another randomness called brine randomness which was first proposed by Miller and Xu in 2017. So in this case, we will consider even Bob is on trust. So we are playing a local game with Bob, with an untrust party. So in this case, we can like just consider the if's quantum system, the raw E part is, hand, is like held on both sides. And even in this case, Edis can still like extract some random bits from his outcome condition on Bob's side information. So in this case, the quantity we want to compute is uh, this conditional Milman entropy. And you can see now Bob's outcome, like capital B here is on the conditional side. Okay. So before I go in, I just want to pause to see if there is any questions. Uh, I have a question about the quantum proof. So what's, quantum, what, does, oh. what does the quantum proof does? It is so, used to, yeah. Yeah, in, in fact, the uh, quantum proof strong iterator is in is a classical algorithm. So it's like you send the output B string as the source into some like classical computer and then perform the algorithm. And the quantum proof iterator will somehow like shorten the B string, like concentrate the B string in into a short term B string. And the, sh the length of the short-term B string will be approximately equal to the entropy that I compute in the like this slide. So the like the usage, the the main purpose to use the quantum proof extractor is to like first thing is to uh, shorten the B string. As a, into the dense, same as the entropy, and then 
Secondly, it can provide the security. Like after the algorithm, the output B string will be uncorrelated with any adversary's side information. So basically, it is a classical algorithm to to yes. post process the the outcome to make sure uh, the final result is kind of uniform and 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 correlated with adversaries. Yes, like exactly, okay. exactly. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So if there is no more question, then let's continue. So then let's like come to the main idea of our work. So let's see what is a zero probability constraint. So like the the easier way to think about the zero probability constraint is like for certain input and output combination, we want to forbid them to be observed in the experiment. For example, for the simplest one constraint case is given the input x, y equal to zero, both equal to zero, we want to forbid to when both uh, output a, b equal to zero, we want to forbid this input output tuple to be to occur in the experiment. And also we can even add more constraint, like add more forbidden tuples. For example, there, there is a three constraint case. So we can add, we can forbid those, these three input output tuple to be occur, to occur or to be observed in the experiment. And the choice of the, the choice of the tuple and also the number of the forbidden tuple are not, cannot be arbitrary. And in fact, in the paper by Kai Xiang Chen et al, this, uh, there are only some combination of the input output Forbidden input output tuple can be like coexist, and also like the number of the constraint or the number of the forbidden tuple are uh, at most three, and they can be like classified by the number of the tuple and also their relative position. So to see how this like really work in the experiment, let's consider the following case. So that's the capital S zero as the state of the forbidden input output tuple. Then in the ideal case, we will terminate the protocol whenever we observe a forbidden tuple like whenever we observe a tuple ABXY inside the state S0. And because you can imagine this case is like very ideal. It's nearly impossible to be implemented. So we propose a relaxed version, which is so-called uh, eta Z tolerance, a uh, constraint with eta Z tolerance. So in this version, for each input output tuple in the set, we will count the occurrence of the of the input output tuple, like a, a prime, b prime, x y, x prime, y prime. And in the end of the protocol, we will check whether the occurrence or the frequency of the tuple is larger than the eta z times the number of run n. So if like the tuple occurrence more than this number of run, then we will terminate the protocol. So just, just want to pause to make sure I make everything clear. 
Uh, I want to clarify what does the termination mean here? I mean, you collect all the results and drop the and uh, the, the unwanted one, or you just terminate each time when it produces the, the one that will not satisfy your requirement? Uh, you, you mean the idea case or the redex case? Yeah, I, I mean both. I, I mean, for example, the, oh. yeah. For, for the idea case, uh, I think they can like always, at least in Bob can always play the non-local game like many, many times and check their input output tuple in the end. So in both case, they can like check whether the constraint is satisfied or not, or whether the termination condition is, if the termination condition is satisfied, then they will terminate, just terminate the protocol. And also, uh, we can design a protocol where they can check the the input output tuple sometimes during they play the non local game, like with some probabilities. So is it clear now? Uh, for the tolerance case. You say okay. it is terminated when frequency is larger than eta times n. Yeah. So th this n is the oh, run this n is till now number of wrong. Like how many wrong they play the non local game. So in this case, it means that you run n runs and you just yes, pick, yes, yes. pick those that do not satisfy this condition. So it, it it is not stopped. It's time uh, for this. Yeah. No, if the condition like if this termination condition match, then all the input output will be like discard because we will just terminate the protocol. Because we want to make sure the like the probability of the input output really satisfy this constraint. We will not just discuss those wrong with forbidden constraint. We will discuss all of them. So you just drop all the result and run. And yeah, and uh, from if, total uh, initially from start. Yeah, if, if it's needed, then we will like restart the protocol and run them again. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. So let's. So uh, here I want to like share two high level idea in order to like appreciate you to like to agree like to 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 make it clear how this adding this zero probability constraint works. So the first idea is by adding the zero probability constraint or even like some other constraint, we can set a re restriction on adversaries attack. But like it's more obvious with this kind of little probability constraint because the adversary, sorry, need to avoid his or her attack from introducing those forbidden input output tuple. Like if, like for the idea for the extreme example, if we consider the idea constraint, as long as the adversary introduce an, a forbidden input output tuple, then the protocol will be terminated. Then adversary will just gain no information. And the other idea is from the optimization problem. So here, so let's consider the following optim optimization problem. So in fact, this like this form is equivalent to the form I give provide in like several slides before. It's just I use the like 
density matrix rule instead of Poisson here. So here we want to minimize the condition monument entropy substrate to like the the winning probability satisfy matrix the experimental observation WEXP. So in this case, you can consider a set of feasible solution which satisfy this winning probability constraint. Moreover, so next, when we add a one or several zero probability constraint, we will further inform the probability that correspond to those input output tuple cannot be larger than this if, uh, eta zero. So because there may be several constraints, so I use vector here. And okay, so for the first winning probability constraint case, if we only enforce enforce zero probability constraint, then we can think the feasible solution can form the pink control area, like all the points inside the pink control are the feasible solution for the like state and measurement satisfy the winning probability constraint. However, if we like enforce the extra zero probability constraint, then the feasible solution would be a smaller subset of the pink area, like the yellow control here. So if the optimal solution of the, the whole pink area is inside the yellow area, then the, minimize, then the minimum number from only winning probability constraint and the one with extra zero probability constraint are equal. Because like for both states, the optimal solution is the same point. However, if the optimal solution with only winning probability constraint is outside the yellow area, then we will have following like situation. Like there is another optimal solution for the yellow area, which is denoted as like the brown star here. And the brown star would be a suboptimal solution of the pink area. And because we are doing the minimization here, so the value of uh, the yellow star, you know, the brown star would be larger than the value of the red star. So that's why we can like get a potentially larger minimum by adding the, the extra constraint. And again, I want to pause to, to see if I, I make everything clear. Okay, if there is no question, then let's continue. So let's talk about the method. I use to like derive the thing I will I'm going to show in the like following in the next section. So so the first thing I I need to compute is the condition monument entropy. And actually we don't need to like really compute the minimum of the entropy like with substrate to those constraints. We can just compute the lower bound on this quantity. So I first compute the lower bound on this condition monument entropy with brown faulty faulty method. And this lower bound can serve as asymptotic ray for the randomness generation. And next, I use the entropy accumulation theory. And of course, the generalized version in order to like count the star information evolution 
for the blind rendering case. So with this general generalized entropy accumulation, I can like turn go from the conditional monomer entropy into the smooth mean entropy. Like here you can see the variable is k super square n instead of k. So here k super square n means the the n runs output the the, yeah, the output corrected from the unwrong on local gain. And also here, E subscript uh, means like if quantum, uh, if star information, including quantum and critical parts, like evolving after the unwrong gain. So we can bound in this, this uh, smooth mean entropy by the monomer entropy. So this FQ, in fact, is the uh, monomer entropy lower bound, like with the observing winning probability Q. So you can just think this FQ is like monomer entropy. So we can bound in with this quantity minus some uh, second order correction term. So it's big O square root n here. And in order to get a like better finite rate, we can like try to optimize the second order correction term by some yeah with, with some according to the paper, the third paper reference here. So let's see the result. So the first thing is I want to show is the asymptotic ray and the global randomness case. So you can see in the vertical axis, there is the monomer entropy, A, B condition on X, Y, E prop. And in the horizontal axis, there is winning probability. Like from the classical bound 0.75 to the quantum bound approximately 0.85 here. So the gray line represents for a standard CHSH. So you can see it's in below all the other line. In the blue one, is for the, the case with one zero probability constraint. And the green line corresponds to the case with two constraints. And the red line is for a case with three constraints. So roughly speaking, like the line with more constraint is above the line with less or even no constraint. And I also want to show the case for the blind randomness. So in this case, you can uh, I use the same color, like the gray for the standard CHSH, the blue for one, green for two, three for uh, red for three. So you can see the similar behavior. And also the important point in this case is the original the standard CHSH will go into zero, zero rate at the winning probability approximately 0 0.81. However, for the case with extra constraint, they will only go into zero when they approach the, the case call bound. So, Let's go to the finite ray case. So for the finite ray, I only want to show the, the case for the global randomness. So now the vertical axis is for the finite ray, and the horizontal axis represents the number of rods. So you can see for the number of rods go from larger 
to smaller, the red will go to zero, which means we need some like minimal required run in order to have run little red. And here I use the same color to represent the one with like the, the, the standard one, the standard CHSH is in gray and the one with two constraints are in green. And here I also plot another line, another dash line, which is also two constraint case. The however the difference is the starting line represent the constraint with like a smaller tolerance, 10 to the power minus six. And the dash line represent the constraint with a larger tolerance, 10 to the minus three. And you can see like for the same number of wrong, the both case with zero probability constraint will outperform the standard one. And also they have a smaller minimal required wrong. And just want to make like all the dice I plot here uh, consider the winning probability close to the case compound. So I said winning probability 0.77 here. Okay. I'm going to end out with two take home message. So the first one is adding the dual probability constraint will really like benefit the randomness generation task. So we can gain the benefits in two, in two like points. So first is we can like generate more randomness. And secondly, we can like get a smaller number of minimum required run. And the second message is even if we consider a like more realistic case, for example, a non negligible zero probability tolerance, the eta z equal to 10 to a minus three, and also a case close to classical bound winning probability 0.77, we can still like have a noticeable rate. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much for the talk. It's a very nice talk. We open for further questions now. So does the audience have questions? Uh, I, I want to ask just a basic question. I, I, I mean, Oh, so, I think we have a question from uh, Juan as well. Yeah, do, do you uh, mind if you go first? Yeah, yeah, you can go first. Okay. Uh, you, you may you may go, Ming Chen. Oh, I, oh, I see. I think it's the other one. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, my my best question is, uh, so the uh, the entropy here. Uh, it represents the randomness, so you want to raise the entropy as large as possible. Mm, yes. And if there is no constraint, the randomness is not that high, so you add more constraint and to raise the entropy to make it more random. So how do you decide which constraint you want to use to make this happen? Okay. So. In fact, the zero probability constraint come from the idea of the like quantum geometry because uh, let me go to like because we know we can we can define all the possible like probability generated by quantum strategy. 
we can also consider a so-called like non-local strategy, which means we we'll only consider like the probability satisfy the no signaling constraint. No, no signaling constraint means like when you sum up like Bob's outcome, then the Bob's input will not affect Eddie's outcome. So in this case, the extremal point of the no signaling of the no signaling property from the no signaling no signaling strategy will contains the zeros. So that's why we want to add in the zero probability constraint here. And in, indeed, we also try some like change from the zero probability constraint to some other value, and this will not give really good, really good entropy bound in our opti like computation. So, but you have several like uh, non signaling extreme points, so you just choose any one of them or you any combination of them, then it gives you good result. Right. Like we, we consider all the possible like input output tuple, like all the possible tuple to set them as zero. And so like we have a uh, one constraint case and also there are like three, two constraint case and there are like two, three constraint case. So all the cases are considered in, in the work like in this page. So we, we in, indeed we really do the computation for all the cases and to see which one is better. So it, like in my result, I, I show the, the best one of the case with the same number of constraints. I see. Uh, sorry, uh, another question. Uh, in your master page, I mean, there's few slides. Okay. Uh, when you, you are saying the FQ, Q is the winning probability, so you just substitute any number or it is a chosen number or it is a calculated number here oh so indeed you can like replace this q with the like experimental observation like the winning probability derived from the experimental data so yeah and of, of course, this Q should be at least larger than the classical bound. Otherwise, we cannot like derive any useful rate, any non zero rate. So this term basically going back to the basic, the original monument entropy. Like, like this Q, maybe I, I should use the consistent notation. So you, you can just think this Q is WEXP here. Yeah. For simple occasion. Okay. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, on you, you, you can go. Okay, so uh, I think my question is more simpler. I mean, from your plot, is, uh, you show that if you added more constraint, then you can have more uh, randomness. I think yes. this is, from my perspective, it seems like the reason you can have less kind of result because in your objective function, you set up, I mean, you, you take the minimization. Right. Yeah, so, yes. but uh, my question is like, uh, in from the physical point of view, can you explain the reason? I mean, from the, uh, optimization property itself, I can I can see the reason, but uh, from a physical point of view, I can't. So that is my point. Okay, I I, I think is like for the ideal case, like if you if we consider eta equal to zero, then we can just think of 
like the adversary can only perform some attack which would not introduce the probability the like the input the forbidden input output tuple so it somehow limits the attack the adversary can perform like is this reason enough Can, can you explain it again? Because, uh, okay. Because you can see in, in, in the, in the scenario of a non-local game, let me go back to maybe this side. So the state and the device can be prepared by the adversary, but we just want, we just like use the winning probability in order to certify the behavior of the device. And also the, whether the state is really what you want. So if we have this kind of little probability constraint, then the adversary cannot prepare arbitrary state and device for the, for the parties. Otherwise, he will be caught and the protocol will just terminate. Okay, I see. So in this sense, the exponential will be like because of the, the constraints you added, the power of the adversary is not as strong as the basically the standard assumption in a lot of, in many QKT protocols. Yes, yes. It's like okay. the extra constraint can like say some restriction on the adversary. Okay, 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 I see, I see. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks for your question. Oh, you may go as well. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> follow back basic question. Okay. So a naive question, uh, if there is no adversary and what's the theoretical best value we can have? If there's no adversary, so we can generate totally random. Yes, of, of course. Well, but even if there is no adversary, like if we use quantum device, there will be still some noise. So it's like we will not measure the conditional monument entropy. We can just like measure the the entropy of the output, like H A B here. And because of the noise, like A B may not still be not uniform. A B may still not be uniform. So like ideally we can like get maximum amount of randomness, but like in practical, we can still, we may still like lose some entropy. Yeah, you mean due to noise, right? Due to the noise, yeah. Yeah, but uh, in this, uh, so my question is, uh, if there's no adversary, does it help mm -hmm. if you drop, if you add more constraint to raise your randomness? Uh, then I think it would not, Help. Yeah. Okay. Why? Why? Because it's like if there is no adversary, then we don't have the conditional part. Then the best way to do is like we, for example, we generate a state in like poly Z basis, and we do a, then we do a measurement on the complementary basis, for example, body X. So there is no no reason we add the the extra constraint if there is no adversary. You mean, because we, we 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 don't have conditional part. So we don't even need to do the minimization. We just like we just like look at the output generated from the device and and see how much entropy 
we can like lay past this. You mean, uh, in my understanding, you mean if there is no adversary, mm -hmm. and there is always a best way to produce the most random case for certain mm -hmm. setting, stay or make input output. So there is no need to choose. Uh, some strategy. There are, yeah, there is a strategy. So there is no need to do the uh a, a constraint to do the dominization. Yes, like there, there is no like there is no reason to really add the and even the dual probability constraint. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. Okay. Juan, you may, you may go again. I'm sorry, I, I did not type any question. Did oh, I? Uh, okay. Raise my, okay, like, I, should I cancel it? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I just to... saw the, the hand up. Yes. So, um, do we have more questions? Sure, you, you may go. Youngjun. So, I, I'm not, uh, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, I, I'm yes. not. I'm, I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just trying to maybe help Chun Yu to respond to some of these questions uh, by Ming Jian. Um, so maybe I should first say this. Um, so this whole business becomes kind of irrelevant if we don't think about adversary, because uh, what is actually meant by randomness here is actually related to the ability of some adversary in terms of guessing the outputs, right? So, so really, when we talk about randomness here, it's really related to the unpredictability of the outcome as seen from an outsider. So in other words, you can see this as uh, a kind of guessing game, how well the, you know, a third party could guess the outputs from this uh, measurement outcomes. So this is really how you should be seeing all this randomness. So the more random it is, means that it's more difficult for you to guess the output. So in order to make sense of this whole thing, then you really have to think in an adversary scenario. So that's the one. That's one thing. And, and then there was also a very good question: like, what are the constraints that you 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 should be thinking about, and so on? Well, so the initial intuitions why we were considering these constraints was uh, was that. Um, the, the constraints corresponds to uh, the situations where you uh, where you think about quantum strategy or quantum correlations that lies as far away in some sense as possible because they are on the no signaling boundary. So they they so intuitively you might think that okay because this is uh, as far off as we can go, uh, maybe they there will be some good choices. Uh, not necessarily, but at least it's something that's worth exploring and that's indeed what we did. But they may not necessarily be the optimal thing to do. Um, and in general, you, you, if you have some good idea what what is a good quantum strategy to use, what are the good quantum correlations to use, you might even just artificially set some constraints so that you force yourself to end up with those exact correlations. You might even do that. You just introduce linear constraint and say that a particular P, A, B given X, Y has to be some number, for example. You could even add those kind of constraints. But then it's not going to work in practice because any slight deviation from the ideal strategies will, will just ruin the protocol. Yeah. So you, you want something that could help you to constrain the adversary's possibilities in terms of their eavesdropping strategies, and at the same time help you to get to, let's say, the right correlations. So here, these studies that we have done, it's not meant to be really comprehensive, but uh, in, in the sense of exploring all possible additional constraints that you can add. But it is, let's say, comprehensive in, in at the level of uh, adding zero constraints, which is, of course, just a special kind of constraints that one can consider. Yeah. I don't know if that actually helps uh, enough. Yeah. Thank you. It's very clear. It's very yeah, very good. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, if we don't have any more questions or comments, then I'll end it. 
let me thank you for accepting coming here and talking to us. It was a, a very good seminar. And let me stop the recording.